Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Ellen and welcome to this week's video. If you can't already tell by the title, this week's video is solely on the launch that I will be doing tomorrow. So this is kind of in the style of the original launch video I did when I actually opened my shop. Just a little bit about where the launch is happening, when the launch is happening, a little bit about what you can expect from the launch. And in addition to that, I will be showing you some of the plants that I have. Have. I think I only have about 10 to show you. Obviously, I have a lot more that are going to be on the site, as you may have seen already, but I don't want this video to last forever, which it might. If you are not participating in tomorrow's launch, that is absolutely fine. I have left a timestamp right here of basically the plants that I show. So if you're not interested in any of this and you just want to have a look at some plants, then feel free to look at that timestamp and that's it. So before I even get into this video, number one, yes, it is slightly echoey. I think you all know where I'm sat by now. Um, I just really want to take this second to thank you guys for basically your support. In, I mean, it's obviously not just in the last month, but specifically in the last month. You guys have just been amazing. The, the floods of, you know, comments and just nice things people have been saying have caught me royally off guard. I didn't actually expect a response like that. So I just want to thank everybody for their support, their kind words and everything else. So since the documentary has ended, I've had a lot of requests for loads of different types of videos, whether that be a tour of the living wall and an explanation on how that works to a detailed tour of the shop or just, just anything really involving this place that you didn't get to see in the documentary. Now that is absolutely going to happen, but please understand I'm laughing because I'm just not prepared for this at all. But please understand that in the next few weeks, it's going to be very, very, very hectic for me here in the shop. So you will get that content. I'm just not sure when. It'll probably be towards, you know, maybe just in a month's time when everything settles down because I do need to factor in a break into all of this. So you will get that content. Feel free to request it down below. But generally speaking, it's not coming just yet because I need to get this launch out of the way. So without further ado, the launch. So I'm going to talk about the launch very generally, e.g. where and when is it, the basics. I'm then going to talk about things that you can expect whilst participating in this launch. That could be how the cart works, for example. It could be things to do with phytosanitary documentation. It could be to do with the separate listings on the website, EU and US, things like that. I'm then going to very quickly touch on what happens after you've placed your order, e.g. how quickly things are shipped out to you, depending on where you are. Following that, kind of the fun stuff, I have some new packaging to show you because I mentioned this very, very, very briefly in the documentary, I think in one of the business meetings a long time ago, I'm changing up my packaging a little bit. So I have that to show you as well. It will all make sense when I show you it. And lastly, I will be showing you some of the plants that I have to offer you. So some general points about the launch. Today is Friday the 23rd of October. The launch will happen tomorrow, Saturday 24th of October at 3 p.m. BST. That basically means 3 p.m. English time. So the best way to work out what that is for you would be to pop that time into Google 3 p.m. BST and then that will work it out what it is for you. The plants in this launch are available to anyone in the UK, anyone in the EU and anyone in the US of A. This does mean that the country you wish to ship to, if it is not in the EU or the USA or the UK, I cannot ship to you. So I have had a couple of questions about things like Switzerland, for example, that is not in the EU. I cannot ship to Switzerland at present. Of course, I would like to anticipate that that will change going into next year, perhaps. But for now, for this launch, if you are not in the UK, the EU or the USA, I unfortunately cannot ship to you. That would include Canada as well. I cannot ship to Canada at present. I am genuinely very sorry about that. So a little bit more about the time that we picked. We picked 3 p.m. on the Saturday for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that <laughs> if anybody is aware, some people I know are, a couple of weeks ago, my auction site that I recently launched went down and it went down at a time where, you know, my auctions were finishing. I had like four auctions up. I staggered them 10 minutes apart. And I think after one of the auctions ended, the site it went down. It couldn't handle the traffic anymore. This is despite me paying 
for the best service, the most premium service I could pay for, for that site. And that went down. I don't have any data on the traffic, so I can't really even tell you fully what happened. My web service provider doesn't know what happened other than there was just too many concurrent users at once. And I've already had to turn the camera settings down because the sun is blasting in my face. Excellent. So as I was saying, we have taken measures to ensure that our current website, our main shop, is as monitored as possible. That's the best way I can put it. We have the most premium service available on the website. And in addition to that, we've paid a little bit extra to kind of be able to call like a fast track hotline in order to fix the site if anything happens. Our web providers have ensured us that we can handle any should we call it spike of traffic? But if not, then we do have a number to call and I will be calling that the second that something goes wrong at launch, basically. In any case, I will be on Instagram and should anything go wrong, you'll be the first to hear about it on Instagram from me. That's probably going to be on my personal account and not the shop's account because I know most people just follow my personal account. So the majority of updates, if any are needed, they will be on there. On that note, we have actually been working on a new website for months and I know possibly one or two of you may have come across it in the last few months. I'm not entirely sure. I suspect one or two of you have. We had a few issues with it, let's just say, and it nearly went in the documentary. I actually recorded all the footage from that day. So maybe if I do a best bits of the documentary, you'll see exactly what happened there. But long story short, we tried to have a new website developed for this very launch and it just hasn't happened that way. So for now, we deemed it safer to go with the existing one. So that's what's happened. We will be looking into a new website in the future. But as I say, we've had a lot on, a lot has happened. Right. That's all I need to say generally about the launch. We will move on to just some stuff you can expect when participating in the launch and one or two things I would like to say. So the first thing I want to talk about is the shopping cart. Regretfully, our website, and again, this is why we've tried to work towards getting a new website. Our current website does not reserve items in the cart. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, we can do about this. I know it's shit. I know. Honestly, I know. I am working to fix that, I promise you. But basically, the situation we're in for now is that if you have a plant in your cart, someone could technically buy that plant. So what I'm saying is if I have 10 of a plant available and nine of them are sold and you're on the last plant or whatever, Technically, if that is in your car and you are entering your payment information, if someone else is faster, they can take that plant. They can buy that plant. Again, there is literally nothing that I can do about that. I've spoken to my web providers and there is nothing that can be done. It is just the way that they have implemented their system. Um, I asked them, there's no plans to change this either, which leaves us in a bit of a sticky situation. But I just want to be very transparent with you and let you know that that is the case with the shopping cart. So there is no timeout, no queues, no nothing. Another thing I would like to cover is buying multiple items. I'll be more specific there. What I actually mean is buying more than one of a certain plant. So say if I'm selling a, why can't I think of anything? A philodendron jerry horn, for example, and maybe you have a friend that you're buying a plant for in the launch. If you are to buy two of one type of plant, we will allow that. If you were to buy three or more of, say, a jerry horn, we will not allow that purchase. Now then, our website can't stop a customer from doing that. Again, we do not have the ability to put a limit on how many of a certain type of item that goes into your cart. We just don't. But what we can do is, and what we will be doing is, if we see people buying basically three or more of a certain type of plant, any one plant, then we are going to refund the entire order. Now, some people might understand why we're doing this, some people might not. Um, for those that maybe find that a little bit confusing, I'll just be transparent with you. I think it's really important to make sure that there is no price gouging and really to make sure that everyone gets a fair chance because I know we're doing a thousand plants, but I, I'm, I'm well aware that that's still not 
Do you know what I mean? In the scale of things, it's still not that many plants. It's a huge launch, but it's it's not going to, you know, I can't provide for everybody. So to ensure that people get a fair chance, I've limited it to two per plant. So you can't buy any more than two. You can, but you will be refunded. So if you want to buy a plant for you and your friend, that's absolutely fine, but I cannot allow any more than that. And that is honestly just to keep it fair for people. I do not want to see orders of someone trying to buy 20 of one type of plant. We will not tolerate that and you will be refunded. And when I say refunded, I mean your entire order will be refunded. So if you bought maybe 20 Jerry Horn and two of another plant and one of another plant, the entire order would be refunded. So please keep that in mind if you are going to attempt to buy many plants of the same type. So another thing you will notice about the website is that if you just go on the main category of the shop, so if you view everything, you will see that there are some plants listed for the EU and UK, we'll just call it EU, and there are some plants listed for the US of A. These are kept separate. And if you go to the drop down list at the top, you can actually see if you just, if you're from the US and you just want to see the USA plants and you don't want to see the rest, because why would you? You can just select the USA category and you will see all of the plants that you can actually buy. I want to explain the reason why this is. And it's quite a simple one, really. When we send out plants to the USA, there is a process involved. And I will get into that in just a second. But to put a long story very short, these plants have to be prepared and grown very differently to plants that we are able to sell in the EU. For example, I can sell a plant to the EU with soil in it or coir or whatever medium you want. That's absolutely fine. I cannot sell a plant to the USA in that medium. And I can't, I'm not talking about just taking out the medium and washing it off. This is a very, very different ball game. So for that reason, you will see specific plants listed for the EU and specific plants listed for the US. You may see on the USA plants a slight price increase. I'm going to explain in a second why this is, and I'm going to explain the shipping process as well. But I just want you to know that if you're in the EU and you've participated in one of my launches before, there's really nothing you need to know. Everything just runs exactly the same. A quick word on heat packs, because I know people have asked me, and this applies to literally anyone purchasing any plant, but heat packs will be used at our discretion. So if we think that you need a heat pack in your box, if we deem it to be too cold, then we will provide one. We don't want you to add them on yourself. And this is because if it happens to not be cold enough, to require a heat pack for wherever we're shipping to, it doesn't matter whether it's EU or US. If it is actually not cold enough, putting a heat pack in can actually cook the plant and we've had it before. So for that reason, we're gonna use our discretion as to whether you need a heat pack. So do not worry about heat packs at all. So the USA shipping and how it is broken down and how it generally works. So as I've just explained on the website, you may see an EU version of a plant and a US version of a plant. And the US version is slightly more expensive. Now then, this is for a couple of reasons, actually. The first reason is, of course, that these plants have been prepared and grown differently to an EU plant. So that's the first reason. The second reason is so that we can offset the cost of the phytosanitary inspection. And I'll get into that in just a second. So shipping to the USA is going to be 45 Great British Pounds. This covers your phytosanitary documentation. So the phytosanitary documentation, we are including at 15 pounds. And the shipping, which is the same as I think I used to originally do, at 30 pounds. So 30 pounds shipping. 15 pounds phytosanitary documentation. So what do I mean by phytosanitary documentation? Because that's just like, what the heck, if you don't know anything about it. So basically, phytosanitary documentation or a phyto, as it's known, a phyto certificate, is a certificate that allows a plant to pass from, in my case, the UK over to you guys in the US. Without this certificate, your plant will not reach you. It will either be destroyed, returned, anything, but it will not reach you. So we provide that documentation for you so that the plant gets to you. We do this using your information and some information on the plant and an external party must come in to this premises here that I'm sat, I'm sat in my shop and inspect the plant. So how this works is as follows. A single phytosanitary certificate is valid for up to 12 plants. You cannot issue a phyto for more than 12 
plants. So once you buy a plant from our website, you pay for the phyto, you pay for the shipping, and from there the process starts for us. So once all of the USA plants have been purchased, what happens is we will have a phytosanitary inspection booked here on this premises. We have one booked for Tuesday the 20... is it the 27th? So we have an inspection book for then, and that inspection is cost dependent on the amount of time it takes to inspect all of the plants. So say we sell 500 plants to the USA and 500 to the EU. Those 500 plants will all be inspected on the same day in one go, and they will be priced according to the inspector's time. And being completely honest with you, this will probably cost hundreds of pounds, this inspection. Um, I can't tell you exactly what the cost is because it's based on time and it just depends how long it takes for the inspector to inspect 500 plants, essentially. And the cost of a phytosanitary certificate for us, minus the inspection fees, is somewhere between, I think, 25 and 30 pounds. But I realise that is quite a mammoth cost. So we've done our best to keep this down and just charge you the £15 and raise the price of the US plants a little bit to accommodate that. This is to make sure that we try and accommodate a price point that's okay for you and at the same time we cover our costs on this end. So I really just wanted to be super transparent with you as to why things are the way they are there. So moving on to what you can expect from after you order. And the only thing I really want to cover really is how quickly you will get your plant. As I mentioned before, the inspection is booked for the 27th. So whereupon these are inspected, we will start to ship them out. I don't suppose we can get 500 plants out on the same day. In addition to that, it's actually not a great idea to send 500 plants out in one day, just in case the 500 plants, for example, go into the same van and get cooked, get frozen, get anything, you know? So we do like to kind of stagger it out. So I would anticipate, and this is just me guessing on camera, we probably do 100 a day to the US. We will prioritize US orders first, just so we can make sure this goes super, super smoothly, as phytosanitary documentation is only actually valid for two weeks anyway. So obviously we want to do everything we can to make sure that the US portion of events goes smoothly as possible. Once we've done the USA plants, we will of course move on to the EU plants. I will tell you though that it is just me and Ben boxing, but we will do absolutely everything we can to make sure that your plants get to you as soon as possible and as accurately as possible. That is very, very, very important here. We will do everything we can. So I think that's the end of me essentially talking your ears off about this whole launch. I'm going to show you some cool shit now because I'm actually really excited about it. It probably doesn't mean anything to anybody but me, but I'm just excited. So I want to show you something about the boxes that your plant will arrive in. I'm sorry, I realize this might not interest everyone, but my framing isn't amazing, but I have here a box, okay? Now, this is how my boxes used to arrive when shipping to, I think even shipping to the US, I did this too, but also to the EU. They have always arrived a little bit something like this. There's no plants in here. I've just done a box to show you. Uh, that's just fallen out. So you'd essentially get a box with a tissue paper seal. That's the only bit I really want to draw your attention to. A plain box like this with a tissue paper seal so that obviously when you open your plant, you break the seal and everything else. And it's all just nice and wrapped. This does serve some functional purpose, but generally speaking, it just looks really nice and it's just, just nice. So that's what we used to have. Now then, this needed changing for one or two reasons. One, the packing time on this box, not that anyone cares, of course, is a little bit longer because this tissue paper can be a bit fiddly. And if you do it wrong or you tear the paper, you've got to start again. The other reason that we really want to change this packaging is because even though we provide you with phytosanitary documentation with all your lovely plants, it doesn't mean that they will not be inspected by customs. I know a lot of people may know this anyway, but I'm just kind of going over it anyway, just in case you haven't done this before. Now, if someone comes to inspect these, I don't imagine that's very nice for you guys opening up a box that's essentially been opened, right? It's This will be torn up. It just It's just not going to be sexy, is it really? So I'm going to show you the change that I've made. So I'll just take out some of the literature that I've printed. You will still get your lovely card in your box when you open it. 
You will also get a little something else in the box when you open it. And I had these made last week and I'm very, very excited about these because the living wall is on them. And I, I really, really wanted to put it on. This was originally supposed to be black, um, but I could not resist putting the living wall on them. There you go. Is it going to focus? Look at that. Little piece of the living wall. So if you've ordered from the USA and in some cases in the EU, you will get this in your little box. And all it is, is just instructions on how to use Lekka if you've never used it before. So that's literally all that does. But I just wanted to show you because I'm super, super pleased about this because it's like no more stock images. That's our actual wall. And that means more to me than you can ever even know. So I'm really, really proud of this. This is awesome. But yeah, you get one of those in the box. But the cool thing I want to show you about the box is as follows. So I realized this is the most boring explanation of a box in the world, but I just, I need to tell someone because I'm just so excited about this. So the new box that will arrive on your doorstep or be delivered to you will be this one. So it's actually, I don't know the best way to do this. It has our logo on the corner of the box because why not? Now it's easily identifiable. Not only that, but it, you can't see on this video, we've made them a little bit longer just to account for some of the plants we have. We kind of took an average of what we might need for a typical box and we made it a little bit longer. So these are custom made. They're also double walled, so they are super, super, super strong. But the sexy bit is this bit, let me show you. So in here we have a little insert that is now in place of the tissue paper. And I will pull it out again. There's nothing in the box, it's just bubbles. We had these made as such, a really big, long, matte laminated insert. And literally, this was made mainly for folks in the US, but this, this does help us out kind of across the board. This is so that if an inspector is to look at these plants, all they must do, and hopefully they do, is pop this little insert back on the top. So it should allow an inspector to have a look and just pop it back and you still get your pretty little box when it arrives and it's not torn up and is basically a mess because I just don't want that for people. So that might not seem like much, but that's been a long time in the making because it took forever to get them printed. But yeah, just wanted to show you that. They're the length of the boxes as well. So that's super nice, super snug. But yeah, just a cool couple of changes that we made to the packaging to hopefully just make the process a little bit smoother. We will see how that goes because this is the first time I'm launching with this packaging. So any feedback when you get your order is welcome. And the last thing to do, in this insanely long video, I apologize, is to show you some plants, I think. So some of the plants I have for you, again, this is like, this is not all of the plants. This is just the ones I could kind of grab at the time. So they may be a little bit wet. They may be a little bit all over the place, but I'm just going to pick them out and show you. So anyone not caring about the launch, but just wants to see some plants, I guess now's the time. So this is dripping literally everywhere, but this is a favorite of mine. This plant here is, it's quite full actually. This one is Philodendron Golden Dragon Narrow Form, which I didn't know was a thing. I really didn't, but I'm still dripping all over myself. Can I get that up to the camera? Be great if it did focus because I can't actually move from where I'm at. There you go. Golden Dragon. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Really, really pretty plant. I can honestly tell you they recover from shipping brilliantly. I didn't have a problem. I've had these for a long time, obviously, very long time. The day on this pot, yeah, 29th of the 5th, I've had these plants still. I've had them a long time. Really, really, really beautiful. Great growers, just very sturdy. I don't have any issues with them. Very humidity tolerant because they have really leathery leaves. So if you're wanting some of that interesting leaf shape, um, it's, it's quite a nice one for that, to be honest. I might, I kind of want one back here. I think that would look really cute. Maybe I can just put him there. Can you see him on camera? Yeah, you kind of can. He's nice. He's a really, really nice one. A little bit underrated, I would say. He's probably not for everybody, but I quite like him. Okay, so this is a philodendron Jose Bono. I'm going to have to pop that over the table. It's going to drip everywhere. So if you don't know anything about philodendron Jose Bono, I'll say it right now. <laughs> I know I've had some requests for videos on this. This is nothing to do with eel manii. It's a completely different plant. I'll just say it right now. This has zero to do with eel manii. Totally different plants. It's not that this is often named Il Manii, it's just different. This is Philodendron Jose Bono. But the cool thing about this plant is these leaves get very long and paddly when this plant gets mature. This is quite a juvenile one. 
and it does have variegation that is stable. It is chaotic, which means it's essentially just a bit all over the place. A little bit like a Thai constellation, but it is stable. The variegation here, though, will fade down over time. It will turn into a more lime green color, as you may be able to see on that leaf there. So it won't stay super cream. This one is already starting to fade. This one here actually has just come in. This is a new leaf, and you might be able to see. I, I can't really hide my face, but if I look over here on the tip of this leaf, I can see that it is very, very creamy white variegation coming through, but it will fade down. Very, very beautiful plants though. As I say, when they grow big, they grow real sexy, like real sexy. I first found out about these plants at the Aroid show last year now. I actually bought one. I was in love with them since then. So it's really nice. Variegation will fade, but you won't ever lose it it will stay in the plant. So if you're wanting a variegated plant, but you're a bit worried about that kind of thing, and you don't want to throw your money on something that's going to revert on you, this is absolutely a good one for that. Continuing the spirit of things that potentially fade down, should we say, well, this definitely fades down. I have here for you a Philodendron Florida Ghost. This one is already fading down to a lime. Now, I will give you my personal guarantee right now in this video, all the plants that I'm selling as Florida Ghost are Florida Ghost. They are the exact same batch that you guys will have seen in my How to Make Your Ghost Whiter video a while back. Now, obviously, as you may know, these ghosts have moved from the old place to the new place and they haven't been directly under a grow light anymore. So they are emerging not white when they come in. But I promise you, they are a ghost. Stick them under a grow light and you will get white leaves. That is my personal guarantee to you. So please, if you buy one of these and it's not white, please do not be alarmed. It is a ghost. Whack it under a grow light. Within a month, you will see a huge difference. I know a few people have already done that based on my video and they are all reporting to me that the grow light is working for them and they're getting really nice bright leaves. But anyway, Florida ghost, great, great plant. So this is not the best example to show you right now, but these plants emerge a whitey cream color on the leaf and over time they go down to green. Really, really nice. As a lot of you may know, they're pretty much one of my favorite plants, if not my favorite philodendron. Um, just lovely, lovely plant. This one's actually got a few nodes on it right there. But yeah, I'm, I apologize for not giving you a proper white you know, example. Uh, please see a few videos ago when I showed a white one, but I promise you they are ghosts. That is what they are. Really easy care plants. They are reasonably humidity tolerant. They have thin leaves, so they're not the most humidity tolerant. I would say that the golden dragon back there, the narrow, is more humidity tolerant than this one, but this one will do 50, maybe even 45, no problem. 45, you might see new leaves struggle a bit, but they're absolutely fine. Easy plants, not a difficult plant at all. I'm not just going to buddy you up and tell you plants are easy if they're not. If a plant is not easy, most people know this about me. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So on to a, a less easy plant, but that is only just due to the fact that there is some maintenance possibly required. This here, I know a few people are probably excited about this. This is, oh, this is Florida Beauty B, this one. Uh, this is up on the site right now. This is a philodendron Florida beauty, similar to a ghost, if you don't already know, but this has permanent variegation. So it is Polaroid, I should mention that. These plants come through variegated. This is the newest leaf on this plant right here, for anyone interested. Notice how this isn't fully yellow yet. It's kind of emerging a lime green color. This will go yellow over time um, in the same way that that there is already, I'm covering <laughs> my face with that, is already yellow. So they will go yellow over time, but they emerge quite green. This is a little bit more of a difficult plan because you have to battle with reversion a little bit, just meaning that the variegation is not necessarily going to persist. If you see it turn green, you're just going to have to chop it and propagate it. It's fine. It's just something to note compared to a ghost, I guess. These are pretty highly sought after, and I, honestly, I can see why. They're just such a beautiful plant. They really are a beautiful, beautiful plant. But that is Philodendron Florida Beauty. Oh my God, that's lecker on my table. So what else can I soak myself with? Oh, this is a cute one. I'll pull up this one. I've got two cute ones actually. But the first cute little plant I have to show you is again a philodendron. And this, is, this isn't this is gonna look like much, but I've mentioned this on my channel before and it's kind of deceiving. I'll explain what I mean. So this here is the wonderful philodendron lupinum. And although it is a cute little vine right now, they 
get real sexy when they're mature. It'll keep vining and the leaf shape will change at the minute it is a kind of velvety, almost melanochrysum type plant. Sorry, I'm, I'm literally soaked right now. But when they get older, they change completely and they, they're not even velvet anymore. They go all glossy and just have these huge big lobes. They're amazing. So I'm offering you these juvenile ones, but just be aware that they it, it's going to change when it gets uh, more mature. So do Google that if you're interested. They're not going to stay like this forever, but they do get awesome. Don't let that put you off. Oh, on that note, because it's also small, I have the beautiful Syngonium. And you know what it is? I still can't tell you what it's called. The name is up on the bottom of the screen, as with everything else, but it's a really, really pretty Syngonium. It's it's, it's like nothing I've seen, but I have sold these before. They have, and you might not be able to see it on camera, but the leaves are like greeny silver almost, and they have ridiculously long, narrow leaves. It's like nothing I've seen before. Great little formation, growing like a proper little spiky star shape. Just really, really pretty plants. I have some of these on offer as well, and they are really easy. I've got to say they're really, really easy. Um, I don't get any problems with these at all. They handle Lekka like a dream too. So really, really nice plant if you're interested in some of the smaller plants, if you don't want a huge plant. So that's a really good one to go for. I've got one more small-ish plant um, right here that I will grab for you. And that is the, which one is it specifically? It's the Monstera Peru Variegata A, as it happens. So this is Monstera Peru Variegata A. And like the Florida Beauty that is right here, these leaves also come in and they have a Polaroid variegation. So you might be able to see it on here. So here you can clearly see that that is variegation and that is present and it's all there. Now if I show you this leaf, I'll try and rotate it round. If I show you this leaf, you should be able to see where the future variegation is. If you notice, this side of the leaf here is much brighter. That's going to go yellow. That's going to be variegation. So although it looks green, it's not. And if you have one of these plants at home, you'll know what I'm talking about just a little bit further up to the camera, just so you can super, super see. Yeah, I think it's quite obvious there when you hold it up to the camera. This side here is going to be variegated. You might not be able to see on the camera there, but this is variegated. It just, it takes a little bit of time, basically. And if you put it under light, it'll go a little bit quicker and it'll go a bit yellower, faster. But that is a really nice one as well. These are really fast growing for me. I don't know if they are for anybody else. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Really, really fast grow. This one has an extra node on it, actually. And there's some aerials just starting. I'm not going to take it up to the camera because it's impossible to see. But that is that. I have two of these to the US, I think, because they've had to be grown very much differently to the other plants. Now then, three plants left. Oh, this one's heavy. This one's no stranger to my channel. It is one of my personal favorites. And I'm going to have to dangle it there so I don't soak myself. But this is Anthurium vitari folium. It is wonderful. It is like a big bouquet of belts, if you don't know. Um, very, very, very leathery leaves. Like, it genuinely feels like a real leather belt. It's the best way I can probably describe it. This one is, luckily, uh, growing a new leaf as we speak. It will expand and get longer. I don't know if I can show you that. I'll try my best here. You may be able to see that there, but it is growing a new leaf right there. Really, really pretty plants. This is a large, I think. I didn't pick up a small, I picked up a large. So that's the kind of size you can expect when getting a large Vitarifolium. They're quite easy to look after, to be honest. They're really, really all right. They take underwatering really well because their roots are like really thick and tuberous. So if you are an underwaterer, they're really, really good, I have to say. Plus it's a nice, um, it's a nice alternative um, hanging plant, I always feel like. I'll tell you what, I'm just deciding on where to put it. I'm going to put it up front. Yeah, it's a really nice alternative to a hanging plant, to the typical stuff that maybe you might have in your house. I love them. I really, really do. I've got one at home. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Uh, two plants left. One of them is Hyodge. People may have seen this other documentary. Sorry, I'm struggling to pick it up. This is a mammoth bilati. Yes, they really are that big. I can't really get them in the frame. They are very, very large. I'm pretty sure these aren't going to the US. Oh my God, I'm just kind of stuck in the plant. I'm pretty sure these aren't going to the US and that is because of their size. It's not the best time to be shipping huge stuff over. I'm not saying that's not going to change in the future, but if you're wondering why it's just not the case that we're doing it for the US, that's honestly why. It's just the size of them. They're just a little bit too big, but my goodness, they're amazing. Can you see that? Head test, because I haven't done one in a while, and I certainly haven't done one in this new place. But there's a head test. 
I'm not going to hold it much longer. You get the picture. They're absolutely huge. Be prepared if you're going to get one. That's all I can say. Be prepared because they're pretty cumbersome. My goodness me. Last plant I have to show you because I'm actually soaked is another favourite of mine, to be quite honest. And that is the Philodendron Dark Lord. And I tell you something, we are getting the most beautiful... I'm going to put that on the table. We are getting the most beautiful aerial roots in this shop on our Dark Lords. And I mean really beautiful aerial roots. So these could start to climb really quick or technically you could propagate them quite fast. See if I can show you what I mean here. Hopefully that will focus. We have a lot of root and this is one of tons and they're all the same. They're just really loving the environment in here and they, they're giving us huge roots. So that's really, I would consider that's a really nice little bonus there. This one's pushing out a new leaf as so. Super lovely plants. If you want to know why they're so hyped, I will show you that myself. It's probably because of this. Check that out. Really, really strong burgundy undersides. They really are one of my favorites. Not only that, but I don't know if you can see here, the catafils go like a really bright cherry color. Not only that, and this is like a little bit sick and twisted, but it is Halloween coming up. They bleed when you cut them too. In the same way that a pink princess bleeds everywhere when you cut them, they bleed. So do be careful because it's actually stained the concrete floor downstairs when I've been propagating these because it bled everywhere. It was not pretty, but there you have them absolutely look at that dark lord perfect little goth plant because you got it right you got it so that brings us to the end of this video i apologize in advance for the lighting conditions if it's gone super dark and super uninteresting i'm very very sorry we've had some sun i put a blanket on my rafters now the sun's gone in and now we're stuck in the dark so i'm sorry about that it's been a long day i hope that this video was helpful I apologize to those who are not participating in the launch, but there's just so many things I needed to tell you guys. It was just better to do it in one video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed at least seeing the plants if you're not participating. Stay tuned for next week's video because I'm going to attempt to do a thing and it may not work well. It may look like shit, but I'm doing a thing and I really want you to see it. And I just, I hope it works well. I'm going to try it anyway, so please stay tuned for next week's video. I'm really excited. I'm saying this before it happens, but fingers crossed. You'll understand when you see it. You'll totally understand when you see it, honestly. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you so much. Honestly, thank you so much for all of your support over the past month. I'm still kind of taking it all in. Um, I've had a little bit of rest. I haven't had a lot of rest, but I've had enough. I feel a little bit fresher, but I'm okay. I'm feeling okay. So thank you so much for everything. And I hope you have a great weekend, whether that's joining in with the launch or doing your own thing. And I will see you next week. Bye guys.